Gethsemane the Garden Church presents Jam for the Lamb Part 2, an old school musical you don't want to miss, featuring Gary Gibbons of San Antonio and Chase Stallings of Houston. It's all happening at the McNeese Convention Center, June 19th at 6 p.m. Doors open at 5.30. Get your tickets by calling Tracy McClendon at 325-227-8916 or Evelyn Smith at 325-944-8256 or pay at the door. Tickets are $25, 12 and up, and $10 ages 6 to 11 and includes good food. That's The Jam for the Lamb, Part 2, 6 p.m., June 19th, at the McNeese Convention Center, San Angelo. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Praise we want the to Lord. Welcome you to the worship hour this week. We thank God for each and every one of you. And you know what? I believe that God has something great in store for us. We are going to be talking about today uh, chosen. It's an inside job. And when you look at John chapter 15, verse 16, you'll see the Lord says, listen, you didn't choose me, yeah. but I chose you. Mm -hmm. It's an inside job, y'all. So come on, let's hear what God has to say. Let's worship him. Let's go to church. Amen.
during these chaotic times. The spirit of anxiety, the spirit of depression has made people feel like God doesn't know who they are. They feel like they are out there all by themselves. And not only just the spirit of anxiety and depression, but just the mere fact that you're going through sometimes can make you feel like you're all by yourself. But I don't know who I'm talking to, but God said to tell you this morning, I know your name. And I know everything that concerns you, and you don't have to worry about a thing. God said to let you know that he got you. So lift up your head so ye gates and be ye lifted up and ye everlasting doors and the king of glory. He said, I shall come in. He said, but I want you to know this. I know your name.
Come on and come on and put those hands together and bless the Lord. If you know that the Lord knows your name, come on and bless him in this house. He knows your name. No fire can burn you. Come on. No battle can turn you because he knows your name. Hallelujah. You're hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know our name, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 Lord. Hallelujah, Lord, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you, 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 Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Thank you, Lord. There is a sweet, sweet spirit in this place. There is a sweet, sweet spirit in this place. And I don't know about you, but when I'm around something good, I just like to stay there for a moment. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. See, it's no harm in giving God just a little bit of worship and praise, amen. The key is to give him the worship and not focus on the little bit, amen. Give him the worship and give him the praise, amen, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, choir, for everything that you have done today, for allowing God to use you. And now it's time for us to hear a word from the Lord. Amen. I'm going to ask you, if you have your Bibles, if you would open up your Bibles, whether you got a hard copy Bible or you got your Bible on the phone, open up your Bibles to John chapter 15. John chapter 15, and I want you to start at verse number 12. John chapter 15, starting at verse number 12. Amen. Praise the Lord. All over the house. Praise the Lord. And when you find it, if you're able, if you would stand in reverence to the reading of the word of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. John chapter 15, starting at verse 12. Thank you, Lord, for your spirit in this place. Thank you, Lord. God has chosen to bless us on today. If you have it, that verse of scripture, would you signify by saying amen? amen. If you need me to wait a minute, say hold on, preacher. Hallelujah. I'll be reading to you this morning from the New King James Version. And the word of God says, This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, than to lay down one's life for his friends. You are my friends if you do whatever I command you. No longer do I call you servants, for a servant does not know what his master is doing. But I have called you friends. For all things that I've heard from my father, I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit 
that your fruit should remain, that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give you. These things I command you, that you love one another. Verse 16, again, you did not cho choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit should remain, that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give you. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. And I'd like to speak with you this morning from the topic, Chosen. It's an inside job. Chosen is an inside job. Let us bow for a word of prayer. Father God, we just come now in the name of your son Jesus, and I just want to say thank you. Holy Spirit, thank you for being in this place. Now, Holy Spirit, I just pray that you would begin to speak, and that as you speak, that you would give us all he ears to hear, a heart to receive, and a mind to do what thus saith the Lord. These and many other things we pray in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, and amen. Chosen is an inside job. I don't know how many of you realize that you are a friend of God. You know, we like to sing those songs, What a Friend We Have in Jesus. We sing, I am a friend of God. He calls me friend. But if you look at John 15 and 16, Jesus is the one that has issued an invitation that has opened up the door for us to have fellowship with him. You see, the Lord says, I can't wait on you to choose me. I, I, I can't wait on you to, to, to call my name and to invite me over. So I'm going to take the initiative and I'm going to draw you unto me. When he said, I didn't choose you and choose, I chose you, you didn't choose me. I said, Lord, there it is. It's an inside job. And, 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 and I know that maybe some of you may be wondering, what is it that that motivated the Lord to say, I'm going to choose you. Regardless of your prison record, I'm going to choose you. Regardless of your ability to, to put tithe and offering into play, I'm going to choose you. Regardless of how many things that you have done in your life, the Lord says, I'm going to choose you. I want to be good to you. I want you to know that God has a plan for you. It's an inside job. And that plan, Jesus begins to unfold that plan in John chapter 15, as he's helping his disciples to understand that even though he's about to leave them, that they're going to be the vessels that's going to keep the work going. See, the disciples and Jesus had just left the upper room. And they're on their way to the Garden of Gethsemane. And God says, I, don't let there be no mistake. What we've started here is not going to stop. The Lord let his disciples know, I've been your mentor, and I, I've been your guide, I've been your leader, and I've been your master for the last three years. You've been watching me, and you've been listening to me teach and preach. You've been, you've been watching me and, and, and hearing me say, it's time to repent for the kingdom of God is now at hand. You've walked with me. And the work has to go on. I'm getting ready to leave you now. 
But you've seen how the Lord has worked through me. You, you, you've seen how I've healed the lame. You've seen how I've restored sight to the blind. You've seen how I was able to walk on water and drive demons out of those who were possessed. You've seen all of the miracles that I have performed. The Lord says, I have chosen you. You didn't choose me. The work has to go on. During the time that the disciples walked with Jesus, they, they saw Jesus talk about how he loved to worship the Father, and they saw that Jesus prayed because he had a, he had a need to be with the Father. They watched him, and they learned from the Master. But it's time for the Lord to move on. But the work has to go on. Before I leave, I want you to know that I've chosen you. You didn't choose me. The Lord says you are no longer a servant of mine. But now you are a friend. And as you are a friend, I, I want to tell you a little bit about the friend. He said, because as you are a friend, I'm elevating you as my friend. I, I'm, I'm elevating you because I need you to understand that, that you are special to me. You're no longer my servant. From now on, the Lord said that, that, that you can have a, a deeper and more intimate relationship with me. From now on, the Lord wants you to know that you can show me how much you love me by being obedient to my commandments. And you say, Pastor, that's good that he told the disciples that, but what about me? Well, I want to let you know, my brothers and my sisters, he wasn't just talking to the disciples of his day. You see, as we are children of the living God, the Lord wants us to know that we can have a, a, a new relationship with him. But if we want to show God that we are really children, we don't have to talk about it. But we can show somebody. We can show somebody by how much we live according to the word of God. We can show somebody about how much we want to love one another. See, don't you understand that as we have been chosen, as God has performed this inside job for us, God has opened up the storehouse of grace and has chosen to bless us by his grace. 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 What is that going to do for me, grace? As God has opened up that storehouse of grace, now we have the privilege of being taught by the Son of God so that we can learn more about the heart of God. We've chosen. And now we are a friend of God. And because we are a friend of God and can get access to the grace of God, now we can get greater access to God. I like how Dr. Oswald Sanders said it. He said that since we are friends of God, each of us can be as close to God as we want to be. Yeah, yeah, you might, you, you might want to say, well, you know, the pastor's real close to God, but just like you, just like the pastor, you can get close to God. Dive into God's word. Start praying to God. Start fasting before God. Start obeying God. And guess what? Just like the pastor, you can walk with the Lord. Pastor ain't the only one that can hear from the Lord. God loves his children. Jesus says that, we have been chosen. And if we want to maximize our benefit of being chosen, if we want to maximize the benefits of grace, the Lord Jesus said, well, just come alongside me. Just continue walking with me. Just continue submitting your will to, to, to my will. 
The more you walk with me, the more you talk with me, the more you submit yourself to me, then the more you open up the door of grace to you and the more grace that God begins to pull out, then we will see that special connection that we have with the Lord. The Bible tells me that there was a deacon named Stephen. And Stephen was full of the Spirit. He was full of the Spirit. And when those who tried to contend with Deacon Stephen could have no, make no headway because Stephen knew too much about the Lord. No matter what they said, they could not contend with the Deacon Stephen, so they decided they wanted to kill Deacon Stephen. Even though they decided they wanted to kill Deacon Stephen, Deacon Stephen stayed close to the Lord. He walked with them as they were throwing rocks with him. He even talked with them as they were throwing rocks at him. He looked up to heaven and the Bible said because Deacon Stephen was so close to the Lord and he saw, had so much spirit, said he saw Jesus standing at the doorway. <laughs> and the rocks only hasten Stephen's connection with Jesus the Christ. He stayed with the Lord. He was, he was elevated as a friend. And, and guess what? You have been elevated to a friend status. And, and as you've been elevated in the friend status, the Lord Jesus wants us to stay connected to him so that we can receive the power that we need to carry on the mission that he left us here to do at any time in any place in this world. We've been elevated. And we're successful. Because not only have we been elevated, but as a friend, we have purpose. I said, we have purpose. Somebody say, I, I have, purpose. have purpose. Yeah, I want you to make that personal, but I only heard a few people. There's more people in here than that. Say, I, I have, purpose. have purpose. Yeah, I want you to understand that because sometimes we get too caught up on just Sunday morning. We think that our purpose stops between 11 and 1 on Sunday morning. Hallelujah. But the Lord says in Ephesians 1 and 4, as he has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. The first part of our purpose is to live for him. He said that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. You see, saints, we've been chosen to glorify God Almighty. Hallelujah. Do I have somebody here that's 12 or under? Raise your hand. Anybody that's 12 or under? Yeah, y'all chosen to glorify God. Anybody between 13 and 20? Anybody between 13 and 20? Hallelujah. Y'all are chosen to glorify God. Anyone between 21 and 35? 21 and 35? Hallelujah. You are chosen to glorify God. Anybody between 36 and 50? 36 and 50, hallelujah. You are chosen to glorify God. Anybody 51 on up? Hallelujah. You are chosen to glorify God. I want, I want everybody to know that it doesn't matter how old or how young you are, you have been chosen to glorify God. See, think about this. God has chosen you for this particular point in time in history. You could have been born at, at any time in history, but God has ordained this to be the time that he would bring you forth. God has ordained that you and I would have to be the ones that would go through the COVID-19 pandemic. God has chosen us to be the one to go through all of the uncertainty in America right now. God says, I have chosen you to be the one to go through whatever it is that you're going through with your family, your friends, your job, or whatever it may be. It doesn't matter. God says, I've chosen you to go through this particular time. He said, I've chosen you. 
It's no surprise to God what you're going through. It's no surprise to God what you're going through. Don't you know this is an inside job that you own right now? You've already been chosen. God says, not only have I chosen you, but I have ordained you. In other words, I've set you apart. Amen. You never thought you felt special before. Well, I'm telling you right now, God says that you're special. I've set you apart. I set you apart. You know how you stand in line and your kids getting ready to play a game and and they, and they choose captains, and, and they wait on somebody to choose each member of the team. And you may have been that kid that was always the last one that was chosen. You may have been the one that, that they say, what's his name? What's, what's, that, that, that one over there, they didn't even know your name. But let me tell you something, as God has already chosen you, you're not the last one on his list, hallelujah. As a matter of fact, you are the only one that God is worried about right now. And God knows your name. He has set you apart for a special purpose. Hey, Pastor, how are you going to set me apart? I don't even know which way my life is going right now. My, my life is under so much stress and my life is under so much mess. I, Lord, I don't even know which way my life is going. How is it that God is going to choose me? Well, I want you to understand, my brothers and my sisters, that, that God knows each and every one of us. And, and like a piece of a puzzle, we fit neatly into God's eternal plan. I know that we fit neatly because in Jeremiah 29 and 11, the Bible says, God says, for I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil to, to give you an expected end. God says, I already have a plan for you. Yeah, you, 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 you may not know which way you're going right now, but you've already been chosen. It's an inside job. The Lord said, I chose you, I chose you, I chose you because I know about all of your abilities. I know about your capacity for excellence. God says, I know everything that you are able to do. You know all those gifts and all those talents that we try to hide from man. God says, I know all about your gifts and all of your talents. And I know about them because I put them inside you. But I put them in there for a purpose. Hallelujah. I put them in there for a purpose. Okay, Joel, you back on the spot today. Come on. Come on back up, Joel. Come on. Joel was on the spot Wednesday night, and she's on the spot again today. I got to stand here because you need some room. You go right there. Go right there in the center. Uh-huh. Go right there in the center. Oh, Mom, she's going to get mad at me now, but I got to do this. I got to do this. Okay, Joel, you gave me some volleyball moves the other night. Joel, now, now give me a move where you're showing how you praise in God. Come on, show me how you praise God just in your dance. Just, just a praise, just a move. Hallelujah, look at that. Look at that. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Now, Joel, just one more thing, one more thing, Joel, one more thing. Give me the move that shows me how you humble yourself before God. Come on, how you praise and bow down and, and just praise him. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, now you say, Pastor, why did you call Joel? Because God said I already put it down in her. Hallelujah. Thank you, baby. Thank you, baby. God already put it down in her. So I didn't have to worry about whether she knew what to do because God had already put it down in her. What has God placed down on the inside of you? What has God placed down on the inside of you that he can use? And you say, well, I don't know if I can do this. I no, no, it's an inside job. Y'all have already been chosen. God says, I want you, I've ordained you, I've set you apart. But notice this, don't get all, don't, 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 don't let your head swell up. Don't get all happy. Don't get all full of yourself because when God said that, that I have ordained you, the next thing God said is God said, go. God says, go and bring forth fruit. In other words, God says, it's time to get off of your do nothing and start to do something. The Lord says it's time to stop just sitting back and expecting that just because you are here that you're going to please God. Just because you came, you're going to please God. Just because you clapped your hand, you're going to please God. God says go, and now it's time to bear some fruit. The Lord said I want you to make a conscious decision for me. 
I don't want you to walk around on autopilot. I want you to make a conscious decision to live for me and, and to serve me. I want you to make a conscious decision to bear all kinds of fruit for that, that because I have already gifted you. Don't you know that God has gifted you? And you can bear fruit. I don't care how young or how old you are. I can tell you that you can bear fruit because the fruit of the Spirit, the Holy Spirit can be reflected in your life if you got the right attitude. If you got an attitude that reflects love and, and joy, if you got an attitude that reflects peace, if you got an attitude that reflects kindness, if you got an attitude that reflects goodness, if you got an attitude that reflects long suffering, if you got an attitude that reflects gentleness, if you got an attitude that reflects temperance, you know how it is. You don't fly off the handle all the time. You're able to maintain self-control. You know how it is. You don't try to talk like you used to talk. Don't try to walk like you used to walk. That's a fruit. And that's the fruit of the Holy Spirit that's reflected in your conduct. The Lord said, go and bear fruit. We bear fruit whenever we win souls for Jesus Christ. We're bearing the fruit of righteousness. When we want to tell somebody about our Jesus, we're bearing fruits of righteousness. We help people. We help people walk in spiritual maturity. We're bearing fruit when we help somebody to walk like and act like God wants them to act. The fruit of our lips is expressed when we only let good conversation come out of our mouths. Every time the devil wants you, well, sis, let me use Sister Loma as an example. I was telling Sister Loma that I got up in the middle of the night one time, and I was walking in the house, and I, and I just misjudged the corner of the ottoman. And I caught the corner of the ottoman with my bit with my baby toe. You know how it is with that baby toe. That baby toe curled up, and I went, oh! and Sister Loma looked at me, smiled. She said, "Did you cuss?" I said, "No, Sister Loma, I didn't cuss, but I did go." Oh! I did holler, but I didn't cuss because I want the fruit of my lips to be the good fruit that God would have to come for. Hallelujah. See, I, I want to bring forth good fruit, and I'm so thankful that, that as a friend of God that he has called us to bring forth good fruit. The Lord says, I want you to do some stuff that's sustainable. Look in Matthew 7 and 20, and you'll see that the Lord says, Wherefore by their fruit shall ye know them. By their fruits shall ye know them. I want some work, and God wants some work that's going to remain. See, God doesn't want you to just be holy today and unholy this afternoon. I say unholy this afternoon. Pastor, why are you saying unholy this afternoon? Well, I, I have been in places where we had a Holy Ghost good time in church. But right after the benediction, they got to the fighting in the parking lot, the church parking lot. God says, I want some stuff that's going to remain. I don't want you to be holy one minute and acting a fool the next minute. See, the, the good fruit, that good fruit is, is the fruit that is born of the Spirit. And how many of you know that, that when you get a piece of good fruit, get you a, a good old apple and you, you cut that thing down the center. And when you look in the center, you see that core. What's inside that core? It's some seeds in that core. You can get you a good old cherry, and when you bite into that cherry, you don't want to bite too far, because what you going to bite into? You're going to bite into a pit, which is a seed. 
You get you a, okay, now, don't get me wrong. I, I, I like prunes, okay? You, get, you bite into a prune. What you going to have in the center of that prune? You're going to have a big pit. That's a seed. See, some good fruit is going to have some seeds in it. Why? Because good fruit will produce good fruit. The seeds will produce fruit. Hallelujah. The seeds will produce fruit. And when the seeds begin to produce fruit, then that fruit is going to sustain itself after its own kind. Well, when we are born of the Spirit, and the Spirit is on the inside of us, and God plants the seeds of the Spirit on the inside of us, then we'll begin to re reproduce after our own kind. How is it, though, that we can sustain this walk? How is it, Lord, that we're going to be able to walk around saying I'm chosen and, and living like I'm chosen? Well, if you listen to Jesus, he gives you the answer in John 15 and 5. Where the Lord says, I am the vine and ye are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth what? Much fruit, for without me you can do nothing. If we want our fruit to produce, if we want to produce fruit, and we want our fr fruit to remain, then we have to stay close to Jesus. We have to learn to draw on the wisdom and the energy and the knowledge and the power of Jesus Christ. Because when we draw on the Lord's energy, knowledge, and power, then the Lord sustains our hope. And as the Lord sustains our hope, then we're able to walk like, talk like, and act like the Lord Jesus. When we go out and we teach, we don't, we don't teach the doctrine of man, but, but we begin to teach the doctrine of the Lord. When we walk like and act like Jesus, we are able to demonstrate love to others. Why? Because we serve in the Lord in spirit and in truth. When we love him, then we can love others. And when others see the love of Jesus exuding from us, then they want to know more about this Jesus. They want to know, uh, uh, hear what we have to say. When they see the love of the Lord exuding from us, and we're lifting up the name of the Lord and glorifying and magnifying his holy name, then we are producing good fruit. See, we learn that whatever is born of the Spirit of God has the mark of eternity on it. Whatever is born of the Spirit of God has the mark of eternity on it, and as long as it has the mark of eternity on it, it's something that's going to last. I want something that's going to last. And as a friend of God, I want to give people something that's going to last. I'm thankful that God has allowed me and allowed you to be the friend of the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. I'm thankful that we get to share the good news of the salvation of the Lord with all men. I'm thankful that as friends of Jesus Christ, God has let me in on his secrets. I'm thankful that the Lord is always there and Jesus was so, he loved us so much that he was willing to lay down his life for his friends. I'm thankful that God has been so good to us. I'm thankful that God says, come partake of my grace and mercy. I'm thankful that God didn't let Jesus stay in the grave and, and, and rot, but he raised him up from the dead. And when Jesus got up from the dead, he got up with all power in his hands. I'm thankful that the Lord has opened up the gates of heaven so he's willing to pour out grace and mercy for you and me. I'm thankful that we have a great high priest in Jesus Christ who is our mediator, mediating for you day and night, mediating for me day and night. I'm thankful that we have a Lord who loves us so much that he made salvation so easy. Because when people want to know how is it that since you are part of the inside job and you got chosen, how can I get the benefit 
is somebody still working the inside job. And I got to let you know, my brothers and my sisters, that the Lord God is still working the inside job. Because the Lord says that if any man would wants to be in Christ, that all he has to do is to confess with his mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believe that Jesus is the Son of God. All he has to do is to repent of his sins. All he has to do is to invite Jesus into his life. And when he invites Jesus into his life, that he can partake of the benefits of the inside job because now he realizes that he is chosen. He was once lost, but now he's found. He can be a beneficiary of the inside job because the Lord Jesus has called his name and written his name in the Lamb's book of life. And he shall always have heaven available to him. He's chosen. The Lord Jesus is still working the inside job. And I'm thankful that he elevated us from servant to friend. I'm thankful that as a friend, he gave us purpose. And I'm thankful that as a friend, he expects us to produce good fruit. But I am so thankful, so very thankful that he chose us because he's working the inside job. Amen, amen, and amen. Hallelujah. We thank God for each and every one of you. And our prayer is that something was said or something has been done today that will encourage you as you continue your walk with the Lord. Don't grow weary in well-doing. Don't get discouraged because God says, abide in me and I will abide in you. That's how we maintain our power. That's how we maintain our ability as we work and stay close to the Lord. Stay close to him, saints, because you are chosen. You are chosen for a purpose. God loves you and God keep you. We're going to close now with a word of prayer and then we will dismiss. And I want to thank everyone again for being here both in person and in the digital land. We pray that for those of you who are in digital land, if you're in San Angelo, that you would come out and worship with us. We know that God will bless you above and beyond measure. Hallelujah. Let us all bow for a word of prayer. Father God, we just come in the name of your son Jesus and I want to say thank you. I want to say thank you for choosing us. Dear Heavenly Father, when we were in the midst of our sin, when we were lost and couldn't find our own way, Lord, you brought us up. You brought us up out of the muck and the miry clay. You set our feet on a rock, dear Heavenly Father, that solid rock called Jesus. And now, dear Heavenly Father, you have saved our souls, forgiven our sins, and saved our souls and you have eternity reserved for us with you in heaven. We just want to say thank you. We thank you for being with us yet one more time. Now, Holy Spirit, I just pray that you would continue to move in our hearts, continue to move in our minds and in our souls, that you will continue to bless us above and beyond measure, that you will continue to give us spiritual wisdom and spiritual understanding, spiritual discernment, dear Heavenly Father, that we may always walk close to you. I pray, Lord, that you will continue the healing for those who are going through various ailments within our body, that you would continue the healing and that you would bless them above and beyond measure. We pray, Lord God, that you would pour out a financial blessing on someone who is lacking right now. And dear Heavenly Father, if there be anyone who is wrestling 
with their faith. Lord God, I pray that you would speak or that you have already spoken a word that would help them to remember that you are the one true living God and besides you, there is none other. Oh God, we give you the glory and the honor and the praise. Now may the grace of Jesus, the love of God and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide with us all now and forevermore. And all God's children joined in together and we sang. God bless you and God keep you is our prayer. Amen. Fall for me for the victories you won. I say thank you. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Praise we the thank, Lord. We thank God. We thank him for being with us on today. I'll tell you, there was a sweet, sweet spirit in the house today. And we thank God for just being there with us. We thank God for leading us through. We thank God for just everything that he is doing and everything that he's done. But we really want to thank God for choosing us yes. out of everybody. Amen. Out of everybody, Amen. he has chosen us. And you know what the good thing about it was? We like to say that it was an inside job because the Lord did it. He chose us and made us no longer servants, but he made us friends. He Amen. elevated us. The friend status. Amen. Amen. I think the spirit was so sweet in that sometimes, you know, when you feel alone, when you feel abandoned, when you feel as if no one knows your name, it is good to know that you've been chosen by the Father, redeemed by the Son, and sealed by the precious Holy Ghost. Mm. God is such a wonderful God, so you don't ever have to feel alone. You've been elevated. Your status has changed. You're a child of the living God. You've been elevated from servant to friend. Mm. You've been ordained by the living God. You do have purpose, saints of God. And guess what? All you need to do now is bear good fruit. Amen. 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 To testify that you are a child of the living God. We Amen. thank Pastor for that dynamic word in this hour, in this time of chaos that we're living in. It is so good to know that no matter what you're going to experience, you are still chosen by God. Amen. You are special to him. Yes. You are not left alone. And he knows your name. Amen. My brothers and sisters, we want to thank you for being with us. And we pray that God will continue to bless you and keep you. Yes. That is our prayer. Please join us again next week on the Worship Hour. Amen.